Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Jerusalem. We are overlooking the old city of Jerusalem and in this talk, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the history of Jerusalem. Just rich, rich place to be. There's no better place to be than on the Mount of Olives overlooking old city Jerusalem. Why so much has happened here. Jerusalem, God's special dwelling place on this earth. Blessed be the Lord from Zion who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Psalms 135 and 132. Jerusalem is in the central part of Israel about 33 miles or 53 kilometers east of Tel Aviv and the Mediterranean Sea. It's situated at an altitude of 2,600 feet or 800 meters above sea level and one of the highest cities in Israel. It's located on a mountain that is well protected and for this reason it was hard to capture by enemy forces. Jerusalem rests primarily upon bedrock, so everything has been well preserved. Jerusalem is the Old Testament Mount Moriah. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the city of David. The city of David was first inhabited by the Jebusites and then David would conquer it. It would be called the city of David and then he would rule over all of Jerusalem from right here. The city of David is located just south of the Temple Mount on a plateau. It's where all the history of Jerusalem began. The city of David has been the most excavated site in Israel over the past 150 years. Here you can see the remains of King David's palace. The city of David is also referred to as Zion in scripture. It has amazing ancient walls, and these walls date back to over 3,000 years ago. Here are some excavation ruins in the city of David. So this was the lowest point of the city of David, and this is where the pool of Siloam was. So Hezekiah's tunnel, the water would drain into here. This was a massive, massive pool. It was a mikveh, and so the Jews would cleanse themselves here and then go up the pilgrimage road up to the Temple Mount. The pool of Siloam was uncovered in 2004 during a water pipe break and it's a large purification mikvah for the Jewish holy festivals like the Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, and so forth. It was the size of two Olympic-sized swimming pools. It was massive in size. The historian Josephus, who lived shortly after the time of Christ, 
records that up to a million Jews would make pilgrimages to Jerusalem on these holy festivals. Here is the model city of Jerusalem shortly after the time of Christ. The Antonia Fortress was located just outside the Temple Mount area on its northwestern side. We are filming in what would have been the Antonia Fortress. Now it's a public school, but it was built on top of what was once the Antonia Fortress. Umariya Elementary School and a convent of the Sisters of Zion lie atop the present-day Antonia Fortress. Some of the ruins can be accessed through the convent of the Sisters of Zion. Tradition places the Antonia Fortress as the beginning point of the Via Dolorosa, which means painful path. The Antonia Fortress was a military headquarters and barracks built by Herod the Great in 19 BC to protect the Temple Mount area and the city of Jerusalem. And here we're looking out onto the Temple Mount platform and where the Dome of the Rock is is where the temple once stood. The Temple Mount is located on the eastern side of the old city of Jerusalem. It's 35 acres or 14 hectares in size, the equivalent of 35 football fields. It occupies one-sixth of the current old city, Jerusalem. How you doing? You know what you're looking at? Yeah. That's where the temple used to be. That's where the temple that Solomon built was. See this little building right here in front of it? Yeah. That's where the altar was. Okay. And the temple that Solomon built was much larger than this, two to three times bigger in height. It was massive. The Temple Mount has played a center stage role for much of Israel's history and has functioned as the center of God's dwelling place on this earth. Archaeological, historical, and eyewitness accounts place the location of the first and second temples on the very spot where the Dome of the Rock stands today. In the center of the Dome of the Rock is the rock foundation upon which the original temple once stood. And here is a view from above looking down at the original foundation stone of the original temple. It will play a key part during the millennial reign of Christ on the earth. Here we are looking at the beautiful Mount of Olives. It's located just opposite the Temple Mount on the east side of Old City, Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives has played a significant role in the Bible. The Chapel of Ascension lies atop the Mount of Olives. Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Chapel of the Ascension. Right now we are on the highest place on the Mount of Olives. And this is the place where tradition holds, and it would make sense, where Christ ascended back to heaven after he was crucified, buried, rose again. So 40 days after Christ ministered on earth, after he rose from the dead, right here is where he ascended back to heaven. Early Christians soon memorialized this place after Christ's resurrection. Later, a mosque was built during the Ottoman period on the south side of the compound and the chapel was converted into a Muslim shrine. Here we're inside the Chapel of Ascension looking at an exposed rock which marks the place where Christ ascended back to heaven.
The Church of Paternoster is located on the top of the Mount of Olives, just below the Chapel of Ascension. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Pater Noster Church. This is a very special place. Pater Noster means our Father. This is one of the places where Jesus came to pray and taught the Lord's Prayer. His disciples came to him and asked him to teach them how to pray. So right here is where this spot marks that place. It's part of a Carmelite monastery, also known as the Sanctuary of the Eleona, which means Greek for olive grove. Soon after Christ ascended back to heaven, early Christians venerated this site because of its significance. This is the cave where it's believed Jesus taught about prayer. Here we can see the triumphal entry path that descends the Mount of Olives. Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Dominus Flevit. Dominus Flevit means the Lord wept in Latin. So this is the place as Jesus was descending down the Mount of Olives on the triumphal entry. This is where he paused and wept over Jerusalem because they did not recognize the time of their visitation. The current church at Dominus Flevit was built in 1953 to commemorate this important event. At the base of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane. The Church of All Nations marks the location of the Garden of Gethsemane. The current church, called the Church of All Nations or the Basilica of the Agony, was consecrated in 1924. The church is built over the rock on which Jesus is believed to have prayed in agony the night he was arrested and then condemned to crucifixion. This is inside the Church of All Nations and at the front is the rock upon which it's believed Jesus prayed. It's called the Rock of Agony. Right beside the Garden of Gethsemane is an olive grove upon which Jesus could have traversed and prayed as well. Gethsemane means oil press in Hebrew. It was an olive orchard with an olive press in it. As a result, it became known as the Garden of Gethsemane and some of these olive trees boast of being here almost during the time of Christ. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre can be marked by these two blue domed rooftops. It's located about 450 yards or 415 meters west of the Temple Mount. Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. 
It was located outside the city walls during the time of Christ. It's the believed place where Christ was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. Here inside is the tomb of Jesus that has been well preserved. Here we are going inside the tomb of Jesus. Now this is the very inner part inside the tomb. This is right beside the tomb of Jesus. Here is the place where he was crucified. You can see the rocks beside it were part of Golgotha. It's the ending place also to the Via Dolorosa path and has the last five stations of the Via Dolorosa located at it. Here is the beautiful Eastern Gate, also known as the Golden Gate. It's located on the eastern side of the Temple Mount and faces the Mount of Olives. It has a Muslim cemetery in front of it, but it's located just opposite the Mount of Olives. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the eastern wall of the Temple Mount platform. This is very, very special. The eastern gate is very, very unique. It's the gate that Christ came through after the triumphal entry, came through it repeatedly. The Temple Mount sat right up above where the Dome of the Rock sits today. It is absolutely very, very special to be here. There are ancient stones here that date back to the time of Solomon. The Eastern Gate is the oldest gate in the city of Jerusalem. And here are some of these ancient Solomonic stones dating way back in time. The Kidron Valley runs between the Mount of Olives and Old City, Jerusalem. The Hinnom Valley and the Kidron Valley meet at the base and then runs to the Dead Sea. The Kidron Valley is referred to repeatedly in Scripture as a place of judgment. God will gather the nations to the Kidron Valley at the end of the tribulation and judge them according to Joel 3, 1 through 3. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of what tradition would say is the place of the house of Caiaphas. There are some other opinions, but this is the traditional site here. The House of Caiaphas has a lot of ruins, has an interesting dungeon where it's believed that Christ could have spent the night before he was condemned to crucifixion by Pilate. He would stay at the House of Caiaphas here. The House of Caiaphas, also known as the Church of St. Peter in Gaia Cantu, which means cock's crow in Latin.
In the courtyard of the church is a statue that recalls the events of Peter's denial of Jesus. Now we'll enter into the first story of this church. It has three different levels to it. This is the cistern or dungeon where it's believed Christ was placed the night he was tried and condemned by Caiaphas. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of what really seems to be the place where Jesus was tried. Herod's palace was built by Herod the Great. Later, Pilate would stay here when in Jerusalem. This is the believed place where Jesus was tried and started his path to the cross. Okay, you want to know something absolutely breathtaking? Right here is where the trial of Jesus took place. Right here was the Bema seat. Right here was the judgment seat. This is where Pilate sat. This is where it's most likely that Jesus was tried and condemned to crucifixion. And then he began carrying his cross and then Simon of Cyrene came from the open country and then took his cross and they walked to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So this would be the Via Dolorosa alternative path or the new path, which probably is more accurate. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this traditional site of the Via Dolorosa. There's two Via Dolorosas, two possible sites. One is the traditional site that starts here at the Antonia Fortress. And as you look out the window here, you can see the Temple Mount. You see the Dome of the Rock. Where the Dome of the Rock was, was where the temple once stood. Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Pool of Bethesda and the Church of St. Anne. This is where Christ healed an invalid man who couldn't walk. Absolutely amazing. These pools were right by the Temple Mount, so just amazing to think about what Jesus did here. The Pool of Bethesda is located on the property of the Church of St. Anne and the ruins of the Jewish, Roman, Byzantine, and Crusader eras are still well preserved at this pool. This is the base down here where the pool was actually at and where Christ healed an invalid man who had been going there for 38 long years. The Church of St. Anne is located just inside the Lion's Gate, and this is the place where it's believed that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was born. The Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, because the Jews weep here during their prayers, is located on the western side of the Temple Mount. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Western Wall. We are standing just right on the western side of the original Temple Mount platform. Okay, so right above the Western Wall is the Temple Mount and where the Dome of the Rock is, is where the temple once stood. So Herod the Great in around 15 or so BC, 20 BC, he enlarged the Temple Mount and he is the one, those after him, that actually built the Western Wall. So what you're seeing here are stones of Herod's time and up above you can see different stones as well. People from all over the world come to pray at the Western Wall and put their little notes of prayer in the cracks.
many people pour out their hearts to the Lord at this place. Here is the western wall tunnel that runs at the base of the western wall. In 1967, Israelis excavated below the ground level of the western wall and found additional stone layers. Here is the largest stone found in the western wall, measuring over 44 feet or 13.4 meters in length. It is absolutely massive and no machine today can pick it up. The Western Wall is accessed on the northern side of the Western Wall Plaza and runs north to the end of the Temple Mount platform. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Southern Stairs area. We're looking at the part of the Western Wall. We're gonna be looking at the Southern Stairs. This is a rich archeological site just laden with things to see here. We're gonna see the old Herodian stones. We're gonna see the Herodian street that got all crushed. We're gonna be looking at the Southern Stairs, which is the most likely place where Pentecost took place right in that area. The Southern Stairs also were called the Rabbi Stairs. The Southern Stairs were also called the Rabbi Stairs and were one of the main entrances from the south to the Temple Mount during the time of Christ. The stairs were cut out of the bedrock of the mountain and part of them can still be seen today. Well, here we are on the southern stairs going up to the southern side of the temple. And these stones right here that I'm going to show you, the ones that are cut into the bedrock, those are the original stones. Now, Jesus would have walked on these stones. These stones were the original stones. And this stairway going up to the temple on this side was called the rabbi's stair. So it was all along here and rabbis would teach their disciples along these stairs here. And there's no doubt that Jesus would have taught his disciples here. You are sitting where Jesus would have taught the disciples. You are sitting where the Apostle Paul would have been taught by Gamaliel, these are the rabbi's stairs, the main entrance into the southern platform, into the Temple Mount. Here you can see broken pavement from the stones that fell during the Roman destruction in 70 AD. They fell from up on top of the Temple Mount platform. Absolutely amazing in size, and they just crushed the pavement. Give you an idea how big this rock is. Just this one here is about 30 feet long by about six feet wide. Well, here we are at a very special place. This is a replica but the original is just exactly like it. When Israel does these replicas, they do them just, you can't tell the difference. But anyway, this is a replica. The, the, the real one is in the Israel Museum, but this was positioned up on top of the corner up here. You can see a picture of it right here, but what it says right here in Hebrew, and it can still be read today in Hebrew, it says to the place of the trumpeting too. So what this did is this is where the trumpeter would come to and it would announce to the shops and everything right here that the Sabbath was coming or Holy Days. So it was a way to announce to the people there were shops all along here 
There's a street right here that will show you that was crushed. But anyway, it says to the trumpeters it was an announcement so that the people would know that it's time to shut things down. It's time to get ready for the Sabbath or feast or whatever holy days or weeks that they were celebrating. Well, just up from this trumpeter stone here, we can see the old Herodian street here, okay? And so when these massive rocks, you can see them up here, these massive building blocks, when they fell down, they were so heavy. When the Romans conquered the city and knocked them down, they were so heavy that they just absolutely crushed the city street here. And of course, this was all excavated and all of this was uncovered. Right up here, once again, was Robinson's Arch where pilgrims would come in, coming down from the Pool of Siloam or wherever, so amazing. Right behind me are shops. This was a very, very busy area during the time of the Jews, time of Christ. Christ would have walked up these stairs. Christ would have walked on this street right here. So absolutely amazing to see this and just to see the evidence of the destruction of the temple and the Temple Mount platform. When the Assyrians were conquering the northern tribes of Israel, many of them fled to Jerusalem and became refugees. Hezekiah therefore built an expansion wall around this refugee area and enclosed it within the city walls of Jerusalem. This is the patio outside the upper room. The upper room is in a second story building that commemorates where Jesus shared the Passover or the Last Supper with his disciples. It's also called the Seneca Room, which means dining room in Latin. It's a place pilgrims visit today and was built by the Crusaders in the 12th century as part of the Church of St. Mary of Zion. The current building was built over a church that was erected by early Christians shortly after Christ's death. And here you can see the apse of this early church that was built by Christians and on top of it the upper room was built. The Hinnom Valley is located just to the southwest of Old City, Jerusalem. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Hinnom Valley. We are located just on the southwest corner of Old City, Jerusalem, the Hinnom Valley ran down and it met the Kidron Valley down below the old city of David. Now the Hinnom Valley is mentioned quite a bit in scripture and in reality right now it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. They water it, it's like a park. However, in the biblical times it was ugly. Down lower it was the trash dump of the city. It was a place also where they sacrificed their children to Molech, this detestable god. They would burn them on this altar, really ugly. So we're going to be seeing the field of blood. That's the field that they bought from the money that was given to Judas to betray Jesus. So some amazing things to see down through here. With its pagan history and burning sewer stench, Jerusalem's Hinnom Valley serves as a vivid metaphor for both the Christian and Jewish concept of hell. A keldama, which means field of blood, Greek Orthodox monastery, was built over the place Judas hanged himself after betraying Christ. This is the tomb of Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest who condemned Jesus Christ to death on the cross. He was the one that helped in that. And so we've hiked up here. Now we've got a friend here that was kind enough to let us in there and show it to us, but right now, there's a camel in front of it, and there's a sheep and goat pen. So 
How fitting that the person who condemned Christ to death is now not visited and his tomb is basically a stable versus the tomb of Jesus Christ at the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which is visited by millions and millions of people each year. The tomb of Mary, the mother of Jesus, also known as the Church of the Sepulcher of St. Mary, is located just a little north of the Garden of Gethsemane in the Kidron Valley. The New Testament is silent regarding the death and burial of Mary, but strong Christian tradition places her tomb at this site. Here we are entering the tomb of Mary. The Damascus Gate is located on the northern side of Old City Jerusalem and is an entry point to the Cardo Road. Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the city of Jerusalem. We're right in front of the Damascus Gate and we have a special walking tour for you. We're going to be walking here from the Damascus Gate up to the Zion's Gate. Why the Zion's Gate? Because we are going to be following the old Roman road through the old city of Jerusalem that's called the Cardo. The Cardo Road ran from the Damascus Gate to just below the Zion's Gate, ran north and south. Here are some ruins of the old Cardo Road. Well, we have made our way, as you can see from the Damascus Gate, walking all along the original Cardo, and here we have the original cardo that was uncovered and discovered. You can see the pillars. I'm standing on the original stones right here. It continues on down there a ways in its original form. And then it goes into some shops, modern day shops today. So anyway, this was the cardo, the main Roman road that Hadrian the emperor built in around 132 to 135 AD after Christ. Amazing. Jerusalem is the special dwelling place of God on this earth, and He has many plans for it in the future. Psalm 135, 21, Praise to the Lord from Zion, to Him who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord.